right, Tomorrow's Leaders, how are you? Welcome to the show. My name is John Larito. I am your host, and I'm going to take you on this journey. I'll be with you for the next 10 or 15 minutes with our normal, uh, just chock full of content episodes. I've got lots to share with you. I've got a like legit a laundry list of topics that I'm going to go through, not in one show. I'm going to break it up into a lot of different shows just because I've been traveling. And so when I travel, I get away from the studio and I, you know, build up all these ideas. I'm out there seeing people and seeing things that are going on and getting ideas and all this kind of stuff. So in any event, I'm here on a Friday afternoon. This is production time. This weekend will be production time. But I got to say, I did this really cool thing. I came back. I was in Long Island, Long Island for a day. Great place. Uh, and I love those trips where you swoop in and out. I had a speaking engagement there. 6 a.m. flight, uh, got there, did my thing, hung out for a few hours, and then back in a plane home by like 8 at night, same day, kind of cool. Uh, but I saw something I have like I never knew existed. If you're in JFK Airport, for those of you in New York or travel through New York, you may be like, you know, Lorito, hello, we knew this was there. I had no idea, but in Terminal 5, if you're ever there, check this out if you don't if you haven't been there, but there's like... It's this TWA. Um, it's the I guess it's the old terminal for TWA Airlines, and obviously TWA is out of business. But they've converted this to a hotel, and it's all preserved. And it's all this retro stuff. It is literally when I say it's like stepping back in time, it's the closest thing I've ever been to to being in a time machine. And I didn't want to leave. I literally didn't want to leave. Um, you walk down these hallways that are all like carpeted, red carpeting, and you're, it feels like you're on a spaceship. And then you enter this hotel lobby, and it's the terminal, and it's got all the ticker tapes that, you know, the old style, uh, you know, s- s- uh, boards that had the flight information where they're flipping the, you know, the, the letters and stuff, and it's making all this cool noise. I mean, it really amazing stuff and uh the furniture is all retro the bar everything like it's just amazing 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 so if you get a chance and you're flying through there give yourself a little extra time in the airport terminal 5 twa uh hotel lobby uh area really really cool uh so okay today's topic i want to go through something that and and again this is something I hope this is an episode that you save because you're uh, going to be going through this at some point in the near future if you're listening to it maybe this has just happened to you but I, I want to go through you've just been promoted and what are the things that you need to do what are the what are kind of the do's and the don'ts and I gotta just preface this with saying I've been through many promotions I've promoted many people. I've seen many people go through promotions. So this is from my own personal experience, as well as observation, as well as working with people, working with clients, all kinds of stuff. And I've seen incredible success and I've seen disasters with people getting promoted and doing the right things or not doing the right things or totally doing the wrong things. So I figured, you know what? I got this podcast platform. Let me share this, my thoughts, this this info uh, with you in terms of what I think are the do's and the don'ts and the things that will help make you successful in your new role. And there's so much to this. So I'm going to break this up into what I think are the most critical things. This is not an end-all list. Um, this is just kind of the core things that are really critical. So let me start with the don'ts, okay? This is the easy stuff but it may not be be obvious. And this first one is one that I got caught up in uh, a couple of different times because it's so easy to, to, to think about this, especially if you're getting promoted and you're now in a situation of taking your boss's old role. Maybe your boss got promoted or something. And anyways, you've been working under somebody, you're now taking their role. There's a natural tendency to want to do the role just like they did it. In other words, kind of mimic them, especially if they were successful and they got promoted, your natural tendency is to say, okay, let me mimic and replicate everything that they did. In reality, that's not the way to do it. Um, you've got to be yourself. And and I want you to go into that role thinking of it like a blank slate. And don't assume that everything that your boss was doing was actually the best or even the right way to do it. 
There may be much better ways to do it. And it may not, even if it did work, it may not just be your style. In other words, your boss, the old boss might have been somebody who was really down in the weeds and really kind of a micromanager. And that's if that's not you or you know, that's not may, may not be what this culture, this organization really calls for. You can't do that. That's just not going to be you. Bottom line is you have to look at the role almost like a blank canvas and say, OK, what does this really require? What do I need to do to be successful? Don't worry so much about trying to mimic your boss um, and expect that you're going to do things different. OK, and I'm going to talk about that uh, in a little bit uh, as well. The second thing, don't listen to other people's opinions on what the strengths and weaknesses are and who the good people are and the bad people and who's your future leaders. Don't listen to anybody else's assessment. It's okay to, and you have to get facts, look at numbers, get facts. Um, and, and if you do end up hearing other people's opinions on things, the other leader is intent on sharing you, Hey, let me give you the scoop and lay the land. Um, take it with a ground grain of salt, form your own opinions. I said this in an episode a while back. I remember a time taking over an organization and the prior leader told me this one person was like my future superstar. And this other person was eh, kind of on their way out. It could not have been more wrong that this person could not have been more wrong. It was the opposite. The star was the person, this person. And, and the, the, the issue was the prior leader had a totally different style than I had. He was super hyper analytic. He was a micromanager. He was this and that. My style was totally different. So he just gelled with this other person. But the other person wasn't a good leader. It just was somebody that he felt comfortable with and would have promoted had he stayed. So what I did was I ended up spending like two months going down the wrong direction because I kind of took his word for it. And I just started, you know, doing things or investing time with, with in certain areas with certain people. And it just could not have been more wrong. So it set me back a few months by the time I realized, you know what, his assessment was totally wrong. So go in it with a blank slate, form your own opinions. The blank slate mentality. You've heard me talk about the concept of um, zero based budgeting, which means don't do anything because it's just because it's been done and it's always been done that way. For example, you know, I, I always go in and when I did go into a new role as a, and being a promotion, yeah, there were some things I wanted to try to keep consistent, but only if they're working. Don't assume that you have to have a two hour weekly meeting just because your other leader or the other leader had it and everybody's already used to it. That might not be the right way to do it. I just saw there was a leader that uh, I know of that came into an organization and, and he cut down meetings significantly because they just were not needed. We didn't have to have certain meetings every week. We needed them once a month. And he made the change and freed up time for everybody. Wow, what a great welcome change that was. Um, so again, don't do things just for the sake of continuing to do them just because they've always been done that way. Um, here's the other thing. Um, don't make withdrawals, be, withdrawals, withdrawals, that's a tough word to say, withdrawals before you've made deposits in an emotional bank account. Uh, I think that makes sense. Just You can kind of understand what I'm talking about, but there are things that you can do that will make deposits into the emotional bank accounts of the people that you are overseeing. Uh, and there are things you can do to make withdrawals too tough decisions, whatever it is, tough actions, things that you're doing that are ultimately withdrawals. Uh, it's like a bank account. You can overdraft the bank account the same way you can overdraft the emotional bank account. Go in there with the intent to make deposits, 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 deposits. Now, let me talk about some of the do's that are really key. What I've seen great leaders do when they walk into a promotion is, number one, is you've got to get to know the organization. You've got to get to know the people. You've got to build relationships. You have to invest time in getting to understand people. And again, form your own opinions. Don't listen to all the press because most of the time I find that it sways you one way or the other and it's wrong. Okay, for, Take the time and do the things you need to to form your own opinions on really what's happening in the organization. You know, who's doing what? What's the pulse of the organization? What's the satisfaction level? What's the moan rate? Everything. Um, do skip level meetings. Don't just meet with your direct reports. Take some time to do skip level meetings and just, again, take the pulse of the organization. That's all part of what a new leader should do. I know a CEO that came in to run a company 
that spent like a year just getting to know everybody in the organization. I mean, just meeting with everybody, as many people as he could. And wow, but he did he, now that was a lot of time. But, and it wasn't like he didn't do anything until he got done with those meetings. He did it just alongside of his everyday role, but it gave him such a really great glimpse into what were the true issues of the organization. A lot of times leaders that just rely on the people below them, that one level, uh, they're getting only part of the story. They're not really truly, they're getting what information that team wants to share with you. That's not really the true total picture. So invest the time in getting to know people and asking the right questions. Um, the other key thing you have to do when you're taking over a role and you're newly promoted is clarify and communicate the vision. People need to understand because anytime there's a change, you're coming in, they don't know you, or if they do know you, they don't know what you're going to be like in this role. There's a little bit, if not a lot, of anxiety that's created by you coming into this role, no matter how great you are, no matter how good or bad the prior leader was. It's just change. And people feel like they've got to, hey, you know what? I've now got to earn my stripes again. I've got to, this person doesn't know me. That's fine. Take your time to get to know this person. Uh, look at the facts. Look at performance that's happened in the past and form your own opinion. But the key thing is clarify and communicate the vision. Where's the organization going? Where do different career paths lead in your mind? What is what is the future of the role that you're ta- of the, these people that you're talking to? What do you see it as? Those things are inspiring for people to understand. A new leader coming in, I'll tell you, that's probably the biggest question on people's mind is, okay, where do he or she, where does he or she want to take this organization or see us going? They just, they want to know. It's like they're on a plane and there's a new pilot that's come in that, you know, has the ability to take us to a whole new destination. Well, I'd, I'd like to know where we're going, right? So that, that's the key thing because people are asking themselves, okay, do I want to go where this leader wants to take me? They're not going to be able to answer that question until, they've, um, until they know where you, you want to take them. Um, here's another thing. Make changes swiftly. Don't rush to make them, but don't deliberately slow things down because you don't know how they're going to respond to change. One of the mistakes I made uh, in, in a one of my uh, promotions was looking back, I should have made the changes. Some of them took me a year to make and I could have made them in two or three months. So why not? Whether they were personnel changes or structure changes or directional changes, if I knew that's what we were going to do, why not make the changes earlier and get a head start on that? Uh, now, there are a lot of factors to, to take into account when you're making changes in an organization, but don't let that thought of your mind, I don't know how people are going to receive this, cause you to delay making changes that you really know you need to make. Okay, make them swiftly uh, and make them uh, cleanly. Um, Here's another really, really big thing. Here's a must do. You've got to find your key influencers in that organization. You have got to find the people and there may, may not be in any kind of formal leadership role. Find the people that are the leaders amongst their peers. Find the people that when people have a question in their room of people, where do people's eyes go to? Whose whose facial expressions are they watching amongst their peers? Those are the leaders in the organization. Think about that. You can look, you could see it in a room of 50 people. You can spot who the leaders are just based on who the people look at. Those are your influential people because they're trying to Get, get a read on them. That's what they're trying to do is understand what, well, what, what's, what's, you know, Nancy thinking and what's, uh, you know, what's Bill thinking. That's going to form my opinion or influence my opinion. Those are the people that you need to get in touch with and get close with. Nancy and Bill, they're influencers in your organization. And when you want to make change, whether it's culture change or a policy change or process change or product change or anything, these are the people that are going to help you do it or not. They're going to be the ones that fight you and hurt your ability to do it. You've got to get those people into your circle and into your corner uh, as much as you can. And lastly, one of the most important critical things a new leader can do uh, in an organization, in a role, is you have to build your team the right way. It is all about, there's nothing more important than getting the right people on your team and the wrong people off your team. But it's about getting the right people on your team doing the right things. If that happens and you've got a great vision 
and a clear vision and a clear direction, wow, there is just, you've got so much momentum and such an advantage there. That is absolutely critical. So, so really take the time to figure out, do you have the right people? And if you do, are those people in the right roles, doing the right things, empowered to do the right things? Because a lot of time people are in the, the right people in the right roles, but they just don't have enough power or they're not empowered enough to make decisions and do enough, in which case you run the risk of losing them. Uh, that's key. So this I know is kind of a high level thing, but I wanted to squeeze it into 15 or minutes, 16 minutes. Uh, there's so much more here. So reach out to me. If you're in this situation, you've gotten a promotion. I'm thinking about actually putting a mastermind together of people that are new to a certain role and get them together. I'd love to get your feedback on this. Get them together and talk through some of this. What are some of the challenges and issues? What are you finding success with? I think it'd be really cool. Even people, or not even, people from all different industries too. Like that would be, wow, what, what a cool thing. And do a lot of leadership development, coaching work with that type of group of people. I think it'd be really neat. So let me know what you think of that idea. Um, okay. As always, thank you for listening. I hope this was valuable. Like, share, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Go down below, give five-star review, and have a great weekend. Have a great day, whatever whatever time of day or day of week you're listening to this. Have a great one, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.